Hi, everybody. Guess what I'm doing? I'm not pretending to be a mannequin. I'm pretending to be a, a scarecrow, something you see a lot in the season. Actually, different regions have uh, scarecrows that wear different clothes. That's pretty cool. Trying to protect the fields. Uh, like a lot of Asian countries, Korea grows a lot of crops, and uh, rice is one of the big ones. And of course, the birds come, want to eat a lot of those delicious crops when they ripen in the season. And uh, they're actually smarter than the scarecrows. They eat as much as they want, and then they rest on the scarecrows. Very smart. Well, we've got a lot of smart kids here, and where are you guys from? Oh, Welcome! <laughs> the school filled with happy kids. Let's meet the students of Sangyang Elementary School. The English class is always a lot of fun with native speaker teachers. Various activities help broaden their vocabulary and improve artistic senses as well as their language skills. Let's meet the ballet club. The kids have fun with jazz dance and ballet. They move their bodies to the rhythm and let the music take over. What's this music? Oh, it's the Sangmyung Elementary School Orchestra. Wow, they sound amazing. Great harmony. You think they were professional musicians? Disciplining the mind and the body. Kendo training helps the children improve their concentration and also stay fit and healthy. 이번 슈퍼키즈 프로그램에 참여하는 모든 상명의 어린이들에게 격려와 응원을 보냅니다. 이번에 상명 초등학교에서 슈퍼키즈가 꼭 탄생하기를 기대합니다. 상명 어린이들 힘내세요. We start with raise the board. Wait a second, in the Wizard of Oz, the Scarecrow wanted to find a brain, right? Well, these guys all have great brains, but they're gonna compete against each other. Only 10 will move on. Yes, they have to use their brains to go through some hurdles. I think they're like five questions. Who's gonna give those questions? Dami, who has a great brain. Hey, Dami. There's no place like Super Kids. There's no place like Super Kids. There's no place like Super Kids. Oh, hey there, Isaac, and hey there, Super Kids. Yeah, sorry. Um, anyways, let me just go on and go ahead and read these questions. And I wish you the best of luck. I will read the first one. So listen carefully. This metal alloy is made by combining copper and tin. Of all the metal alloys made with copper, it is the oldest. So there is even a historical age named after it. These days, there is an Olympic Games medal made with this metal. What is this medal called? We would like the name of a medal. Combine copper and tin. Of all the metal alloys made with copper, this is the oldest. These days, there's an Olympic medal with this, made with this. What is it? Five, four, three, Two, one, please raise your boards. The answer is bronze. Bronze. Actually, lots of statues and sculptures are made out of bronze. See, bronze is a type of metal that is great for making different types of forms and shapes. And it doesn't rust easily. Now, the second question is about a country. Hope you know your countries, because here I go. This country is the largest island in the West Indies. 
It is located east of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and south of America's Florida Peninsula. Its capital city is Havana. What is the name of this country? It's a country. It's an island. It's capital city, Havana. What is it? Five, four, three, two, and one. You know what to do. Raise them, raise them, raise them up. The answer is Cuba. Cuba. That's right, the answer was Cuba. Hmm, that was a pretty hard question, but y'all did great. Now, this next question is a math question. Yay! Well, that means you have to take down some notes because there are um, some numbers in it. Okay, so think hard, use your brain wisely. Here I go. Isaac bought five candies for 2001 and four chocolate bars for 2001. Then how much more does the chocolate bar cost than the candy? I bought five candies, I love candies. Bought them for 2001, four chocolate bars for 2001. So, how much more does a chocolate bar cost than a piece of candy? If you get it right, you will not get a piece of candy or chocolate, but you might get a sticker. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa, a lot of right answers. The answer is 101. That's right, the answer is 101. But you know, now that I think about it, I'm actually kind of upset because Isaac bought all that candy and he never even gave me one. <laughs> Not even like a piece. <sighs> Anyways, before I get even more upset, I think it's a good idea that we should go on to the next question, which is about the human body. Here I go. Parts that go inside a camera, such as the lens, the iris, and the film, look and work similarly to this organ in our body. What is this body part that we use to look at beautiful scenery and read books? Really easy today, what's going on? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see the answer with our eyes. <laughs> Eye. answer was eye or eyes, both of them. Well, they are part of the human body. And this last question is about, you know, the health of our body. So here I go. Vitamins are very important for our health. Most of the vitamins that we need are taken through food. However, this type of vitamin is different. It is made inside our body with the help of sunlight. What is this vitamin called? the name of a vitamin. Most of the vitamins that we need, we get when we eat food. That's how we get it. Or of course you can eat a multivitamin. Now this is different. This is made by our body with the help of sunlight. We need some sun to get this. What vitamin is it? Vitamin Q? Vitamin M? What is it? Five, four, three, two, one, raise your boards. The answer is vitamin D. <laughs> Stiff competition. But yes, 10 will move on. You've done a great job, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, someone who helped us a lot 
who does a great job every single time is Dami, and she will move on with us to the next round too, right Dami? That's right, Isaac, thank you for the compliment, and congratulations to the 10 students who will go on to the next round. I'll see you soon. Let's go right now to the next round. From 40, we went to 10, and it will go to 5. Very competitive in the first round, more competitive in this round. Yes, it's uh, kind of tempting to panic. <gasps> Pressure buzzer, prematurely. Some people, though, very wise, they hear the hint to the end and press it when they know the answer. Get two right, and you move on. Now, of course, in this, this round, we're going to talk about a country. These guys were given no questions in advance, but they were told the country so they could do a little studying. Want to know what country? Check it out. Mongolia is a country of endless open land that meets the sky. It is located in the middle of the Asian continent. In the 13th century, Mongolia was the world's greatest empire that had a great influence on in many countries, east and west. The beautiful open plains of Mongolia are attracting tourists from all over the world. The tribes that carry on the nomadic traditions and culture are only one of the few in the world. These traditions and its long history makes Mongolia a unique and special country. Let's learn more about Mongolia, the place people call the land of wind. We have a lot of exciting questions prepared and of course for this round, we've actually imported a Mongolian. Her name is Dami. Nice costume. Thanks, Isaac. This is actually a traditional costume called Diru. It's really shiny, very has lots of intricate designs on it, and it makes lots of noises, too. Looks cool. Okay, let's get to our first cool question. In 1995, Seoul became sister cities with this city, and there is a street in Seoul named after it. It got its name in 1924, and it means the Red Hero. What is this city? Number four, first to press down. Ulaanbaatar. Ah, oh, that's right. Good job. Excellent. The capital city of Mongolia. First one, that's how it's done. Question two. The 1995 year-end special edition of the Washington Post in the USA shows this person as the greatest person in the last 1,000 years of history. Number two. We'll get the mic to you. Hang on a second. All right. Okay, let's hear your answer. Genghis Khan. Good job. Right. Yeah. I guess uh, Washington Post chose him in the last 1,000 years of history as the, the greatest person. Wow, that's pretty serious. Okay, so here's our next serious question. Genghis Khan was born near the Lake Baikal, which is now a Russian territory, and became the head... Well, that was pretty Three. quick. What's your answer? Hofskull Lake. Nope. Let's hear the rest of the hint. And became the head of his tribe. When he became the leader, he got the title Genghis Khan, which means the ruler of the universe. Then what was Genghis Khan's given name? Number four. All right, number four, what's your answer? Temochun. Good 
Boom. Yeah. And just like that, moving on. First to move on, very good. Uh, four more spots to fill. It's uh, kind of ironic. My name's not Genghis Khan or anything, but Isaac actually means ruler of the universe as well. <laughs> you know, we had a couple questions about Genghis Khan, and it would be really cool if we could actually see a picture of what he looked like. Well, surprise Isaac, I have a portrait of Genghis Khan right next to me. Now, it's not drawn on paper, but drawn on leather. The people of Mongolia actually raised lots of animals, so they used their skins, the leather, to make things, such as this portrait. Now I have another um, thing that is made out of leather, which are these boots in front of me. Now these boots have a special name, and they're called Kutur. They look really warm and comfy, sturdy. Yeah, they look like it. Here are mine, pretty sturdy, but not so warm. And they kind of smell. <laughs> Here's the next question. Most of Mongolia is made up of highlands and deserts. This well-known desert means a land... Boom, buzzer down. Number 24. Okay, what's your answer? Gobi Desert. Good job. Gobi Desert, Gobi Desert, Go... Uh, uh, yes, Gobi Desert is correct. Here's the next question. What comes to mind when you hear the following? Yurt. Felt. Pow. Tent. Number eight. Very quick. Okay, what's your answer? House. Number 36. One moment, please. Thank you for waiting. What's your answer? Care. Good job. Yeah. You put all the hints together and you made sense of it and you got the right answer. Good job. Here's the next question. In September 2009, Korea's Jeju Island hosted the third Delphic Games, which is like the Olympic Games of cultural events. The first gold medal was won by Prevruk Temujin, who played a traditional musical instrument. It was an instrument called Morin Tologai Hol, or Kil Kol. In Korea, it is called Madugum, because it looks like the head of this animal. Okay, 24. Oh, okay, what's your Horse. Good job, you get the Horse, game. yeah, good job. A lot of horses in Jeju, though, a lot of horses in uh, Mongolia. And even if you knew the Chinese characters, you might figure it out. The Ma means horse. Excellent. You know, it'd be really cool. I mean, probably don't have it, but it'd be really cool if we could get one in the studio. Oh. Ta-da! Isaac, I have the Madugum with me right here. Now, it has lots of different names, but in Korea we call it Madugum because Ma means horse and Tu means head. Now I heard it also makes a very beautiful noise, so let me just, I don't know how to play it, but I'll just try it right now. It actually kind of sounds similar to the cello. Huh, I wonder if uh, that great famous cello player, Yo-Yo Ma, if his name Ma means horse as well. <laughs> hey, can you kind of turn it around and we can see the top that looks like the horse head? Okay, so this is right here, this is the madugum, and if you look closely, this is the head of the horse. I wish all cellos looked like this. It's really fascinating and pretty neat. It is indeed. Thank you very much. Okay, next question. Mongolia is located inland on the Asian continent, so it has no coastline. It shares borders with two countries. Number 16. All right, what's your answer? Russia and China. Good job. Yeah, very good. You got them both right. Actually, we were going to give you China and have you guess Russia, but uh, you knew them both. So bingo point for you. Excellent job. 
Next question. The biggest festival in Mongolia is the Nadam Festival takes place every year on July 11. People celebrate it. Okay, 16. Okay, if you get this one right, you're going to be going on to the next round. What's your answer? Independence Day. We continue. Traditional games that are similar to those of Korea. The three essential games are horse racing, archery, and a sport called bach, which is very similar. Number 23. Okay, let's hear your answer. Zero. Good job. Well done, yeah. yeah. Actually, I've seen both. I've seen Shidam and the traditional wrestling of Mongolia. Very intense. You think, oh yeah, very easy. No, no. My arm still is a little bit off from the time I tried it. Okay, next question. The history of currency used in Mongolia goes back a long time to the 13th century. 22. Tigrit. Tigrit. Good job. Wow. You know, <laughs> I love many things, including money. <laughs> no, actually, I love to watch money, look at money. I collected coins when I was a kid, so one thing we do sometimes uh, when we talk about money from different countries is we take a look at it, and I'd be very happy if we could uh, actually see the money you mentioned. Well, Isaac, today's your lucky day because I have two types of tugriks right here. I'm going to start from the bottom, okay? Now, right here, we have the famous conqueror, Genghis Khan. And as we go up, this um, person is actually a hero in the modern history of Mongolia. His name is Su Batre. Now, he brought Mongolia's independence from China. Wow. Two historical figures, two types of money. Very cool. Thanks a lot. All right, let's go to the next question. Mongolians have called Korea Salongos in the past. In Mongolian, Salongo means this. It is because Korean traditional clothes, sektong, is colorful just like this. What is this thing that you see in the sky after it rains? Number two, perhaps moving on, joining the other two. Okay, Mr. Shrek, what's your answer? Rainbow. Good job, you can Oh, yeah. Rainbow. Good, good, good. Three spots filled, two to go. Among the seven on the floor, four right now have answered one correctly. You need two to move on. Let's see what happens. Here's the next question. Mongol is located in the northern regions, and so it can get very cold. So Mongolians have traditional liquors they drink to beat the cold. This alcoholic drink is... Number 36. All right, number 36, what's your answer? Hi, Rag. Good job, come on. Yeah. Made with fermented horse milk. Wow. Okay. Two guys, two gals, one spot to go. Let's hear the next question. In Mongolia, there is a lot of recent development to gather the natural resources that are buried in the ground. Some of the minerals that are being dug up are gold, tungsten, copper, and this, which is used for nuclear power generation. Number 22. All right, will you be the last one to fill the last spot? Let's hear your answer. Coal. Number 12. Okay, what's your answer? Uranium. Yes, uranium. Uranium used to generate nuclear power. What a powerful mineral indeed. Here's our next powerful question. Historically, Mongolia was influenced by Tibetan Buddhism, also known as Lamaism. So the flower that represents Mongolia is this flower that is considered sacred in Buddhism. It blooms over the water's surface in muddy ponds with roots that go deep under the water. Of the following, which flower represents Mongolia? Carnation. Lotus. 
Number eight. Okay, what's your answer? B. Good job. The Lotus is right. I told you, intense competition. Of the six, now five have a headband, and there's one spot to go. Okay, let's see who fills that spot. Genghis Khan, who founded the great empire of the Yuan Dynasty, made this city its capital. All right, number 16, if you get this one right, you're gonna be the final contestant going to the next round. Do you think you have the right answer? Uh... Give it a try. <laughs> Let's hear the rest of the hint. Later, this city became the capital of the Qing Dynasty and is the present capital of China today. What is this city? Number 39. Right, let's hear your answer. Beijing. Good job. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Now. Every single person on stage right now has answered at least one correctly, right? So, you gotta have two to move on. One spot to go. This is our final question. In Mongolian, its name means made of gold. This mountain range is 2,000 meters long, spanning from Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and to China. Will it be 22? Okay, let's hear your answer. Al Kai Mountains. Good job. All right. And it's done. Finally. Woo! Major competition. And these five will compete, of course, in the next round. Before we go there, we got to say uh, thank you to the lady who wore this amazing costume. Tommy, thank you. You're welcome, Isaac. I'm glad you like this traditional costume. Next time, hopefully, I'll come up with another unique one. All right, well, until then, bye. Bye. All right, guys, let's go to the next round. And more intense competition gets. Of course, we're moving on. Started with 40, went to 10, and five here. Only one can be standing at the end. The one with the most amount of points. Good job so far. 100 points given, and of course, it goes up and up for uh, wrong answer minus zero. Okay, let's meet these fantastic contestants. Here they are. We have a fantastic board as well. Lots of questions, lots of categories, 10, 20, and 30 point questions. Behind one of those categories is a bonus question. So whoever gets it, regardless of your score, gets a big prize. And uh, you all have a chance as well. Use it wisely. You can double the value of a 10 pointer to make it 20. Why would you? I don't know, but you can, your choice. But to double the value of a 30 pointer to make it 60, now that's serious. Okay, let's look at our serious board. Arts, color, magic. Let's start with plants, a 10 pointer. Good luck, everybody. This plant is known to have properties that absorb radiation. So, after the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster, it is said that this plant was used a lot to clean up the soil. People say that Columbus first introduced this plant to Europe. You will also see this yellow flower a lot 
in Van Gogh's paintings. What is this plant? Number 24. Sunflower. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> 10 points for you. I heard you like to listen to music. A lot of great artists in Korea. Do you have a favorite group or singer? Big Bang is one of my idol group. Cool, very cool. Well, since you got that right, you get to choose a category. I'll do color in 20. Okay, for 20 points, here's the category, color. Whoa, it's a bonus! We've had it come out last. Sometimes it comes out uh, much quicker. It did this time. So, color for 20 points, but also a bonus prize. Here's the color question. Many flags of Islamic countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Iraq, and Kuwait, have this color in this national flag. That's because this color is said to represent the Prophet Muhammad, founder of the Islamic religion. Number four. Green. He says green for 20 points and a big prize. Yeah, green is right. 20 points, big prize. Good job, good job. So number four, I read in your profile that you like to try new food. Do you like to go to new places and try new food or do you actually create your new dishes? Yes. So what's something that you've tried recently that's definitely different, new? Uh, mayonnaise, ganseoseo. So you've dipped some uh, shrimp in the mayonnaise? Yes. How did it taste, okay? Uh, delicious. Delicious. Okay, interesting. Well, you've got the board. Choose one. Uh, country. 30 points. Anybody going to use their chance? All right, 30 points. The category is country. The Remen Maksasai Award is an award given to people who have contributed greatly in areas of social welfare, media, international cooperation, and other good deeds. The prize was created to commemorate Ramon Maksasai, the late president of this country who died in a plane accident on March 7, 1957. What is this country located in Southeast Asia and made up of many islands? Number 22. Uh, Indonesia. Is that the right answer for 30 points? Number two. Philippines. He says Philippines for 30 points. Yeah, Philippines! <laughs> Had a 10-pointer, a 20-pointer, now a 30-pointer. Very good, guys and gals. Uh, let's see for a second. I, I read that you like to play. Does anybody not like playing? I mean, what's so special about playing? What do you do to make it special? Um, actually, I don't have something special, but I play really, like, passionately. Very good. So you don't waste your playtime, you use it wisely. Passionate player. Interesting. Okay, number two, please choose a category. War and 20 points. War. Scary category, 20 points. This war started in 1853 when the alliance of Turkey, England, and France fought against Russia. Nightingale went to the battlefield in Turkey to treat wounded soldiers and earned the nickname the Lady with the Lamp. What is the name of this war? Number four. Korean War. All right. Crimean War. I gotta do that. Dip some uh, shrimp in mayonnaise might improve my brain functions. All right, gonna try a new uh, category. Magic. Magic. Who dislikes magic? Nobody, let's check it out. Hello Super Kids and welcome back to the world of magic. 
right now, you guys are at my studio. Well, that's the wall of my studio. And for a change, this time, I like to teach you guys a magic trick. So, you guys ready to learn? So look and concentrate, because this magic is very, very fun. Now, look, a bill. Now I'm going to fold the top of the bill like this. I'm going to fold the bottom of the bill like this. Now watch closely. I'm going to hold it like this. And then around. Watch. I'm going to put a ring through it showing there's nothing here. Of course, if you're curious, we're going to show you that there's nothing inside the bill. Now, the secret is, this coin was actually hidden behind the bill at the start. See, I was holding it like this. Of course, in the front, you really can't see it. But in the back, you can see there's a coin. Now first, I fold the top of the bill to cover the coin. Next, I fold the bottom of the bill to entirely cover the coin. Next, I hold this like this on both thumbs and the coin will actually help you from preventing the bill to fall. At the end, you hold the bill like this, make a fist with your right hand and dump the coin inside the right hand. And you're showing that there's nothing inside. The last part in front motion, see, oh, there's nothing inside. Voila, and drop. There's nothing inside. Actually hiding the coin over here. Now guys, you just learned a magic trick. Now here's today's quiz. Now if you go to this school, you can learn magic. And to go to this school, you have to take the express train at the platform 9 and 3 fourth at King's Cross Station. What is the name of the school that Harry Potter attended? Number 22. Uh, Hogwarts. He says Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> you got it right. Did you read all the Harry Potter books? Yes. You see the movies? Yes. Yeah, very good. All right, well, please choose a category. Transport 30. For 30 points, I ask you again, anybody want to use a chance? No. 30 points it is. The name of this comes from the Italian word that means to shake or rock. You will see many of these boats sailing in the waterways of Venice. These days, this word is used... Number 24. Gondola. Is that the right answer for 30 points? You betcha! Good job! Bang! Big bang with that big score. Good job. Number 24, what's your choice? Words. Words for 10 points. Here's the question. What word commonly fits in all the blanks? Blank, tennis. Time, blank. Yes, number four. Table. Ah, uh, yeah. Good job. Yes, table tennis, timetable, and dinner table. Starting to get hungry. All right, let's look at our scoreboards for a second. E number two has 130 points. Number four, 150. Number 22, 110. Number 24, 140. 36 has 100. Still very close game. Even though number four is in the lead, leading only by 10 points. So, number four, what's your choice? Global Friends. Global Friends for 20 points. Here it is. Well, hi, Super Kids. My name is Carlo, and I live in New York City. And this is Washington Square Park. New York City is a very big city with lots of international airports. 
one of the most famous ones, named after this person. He's the 35th president of the United States. He was elected in 1961, but assassinated two years later in 1963 while campaigning in Dallas, Texas. What is the name of this person? Number four. Mr. K Kennedy. He says Kennedy. Yeah. Very good. TFK. TFK is right, John F. Kennedy. You are correct. We've got a 10 pointer, a 20 pointer, and two 30 point questions left. Nobody's used their chance. What's your choice? Logic. Logic. Let's get rid of that 10 pointer. Logical question coming up. At Isaac's house, there are 1,200 liters of water in the water tank. If his family uses 150 liters of water every day, then how long will it take? Number 22. Eight days. That's correct. <laughs> Love to swim in that tank. All right, we're not at home here in the studio. Please choose the category. Music. Music for 20 points. You are listening to the triumphal march from the opera Aida by Verdi. It is set in ancient Egypt and it is said to have been composed to celebrate the opening of this canal. It is 162. Number 22. Panama Canal. Is that the right answer? No, it isn't. Shall we hear the rest of the hint? Or do we have anybody want to guess? Here's the rest of the hint. It is 162.5 kilometers long and connects the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. What is this canal? Number 36. The Suez Canal. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Who doesn't like to read? Who doesn't like to play? But I'm guessing, Yojin, you really like to read. Do you have a favorite uh, book or series? Yes. Which is? I like the Harry Potter. All right, favorite genre? My favorite genre is fantasy books. Excellent, okay. Now you're on the board like everybody else. Still anybody's game, two 30 pointers possibly 60 pointers, if you use your chance. What's your choice? Arts. Arts? Anybody gonna use their chance? Saving it for the end? Okay, 30 points. Arts. The city of Gwangju in Korea is very famous for this. In fact, this design and arts event is taking place right now in Gwangju. What do you call this art exhibition event that takes place every two years? City of Gwangju is famous for this. It's happening right now in Gwangju. Big exhibition, a lot of art, a lot of stuff happening every two years. How do you say every two years in one word? Five seconds. Biennale, Biennale, the Gwangju Biennale, biannual, every two years. That was the hint. Obviously, you need to go down there and check it out. It's happening. Go check it out. Get some uh, culture. Okay, guys, we've come down to our final question. The category is Earth, and I'm guessing that you guys want to push your buzzers down and use your chances. Yes? No? This is your chance. Go for it. All right. Come on. There they are. It's a big one for 60 points. So essentially, if you look at the scoreboard, number two has 130, four has 170, 22 is 120, 24, 140, number 36, 120. Whoever gets this 60 point question wins, right? Good luck to you. Here's the big question. 
This phenomenon describes a change in weather when the seawater temperature rises in the coastal area. Number 24. Rain. If it's rain, she becomes a school champion, the reigning champion today. Is it rain? No. Let's hear the rest of the hint. In the coastal areas of South America and the Pacific Ocean. Number 36. El Nino. That's her answer. She's 120 points. If she gets it right, 180. 60 points makes a big difference. She'd win by 10 points. Is that the right answer? El Nino! Wow! Woo! Just like a fantasy novel, came from behind, two questions right, boom, the school champion. El Nino is right, congratulations, you all did a great job, everybody was on the board, but it is 36, who's moving on to our final round. Last round, amazing job. How many did you get right? Two. Two questions, and here you stand, the school champion. One of them was a huge question worth 60 points. That's amazing, okay. Quite a strategy. So before we dive into this round, you wanna look into this camera and say something to mom and dad? Hello, mom and dad. I'm so glad you helped me learn all the information uh, for this round. I will be the school champion. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, excellent. Not too nervous. So do you know what we're going to do? Yes. We're going to go through a crossword puzzle for those of you who are watching for the first time. And you have 60 seconds. Now, of course, you hear a couple of hints. If you just don't get it, you can say pass, but that eats five seconds off the clock. We'll give you three passes. So I think there's like 10 words. And ideally, you make it to the end, reveal all the words, and also reveal some letters in the master word. Now, we got to solve that big super word to become a super kid today. You were already the school champion. Excellent job. Now it's time for our last challenge. So let's look at three letters. We like to kind of mix it up, keep it random. E, H, and T are connected to three different puzzles. I think I'll do T. T. Okay. This has leaves, branches, and roots. Tree. Some types of this fish make electricity. Eel. A tool people use to wrap the string when flying a kite or fishing. Pass. You can see this in the sky after rain. Rainbow. You raised this in the first round of Super Kids. Board. This imaginary animal often appears Dragon. in legends. The king of animals that lives in the Lion. plains. An instrument that usually has six strings and is played by strumming or plucking with the fingers. Guitar. Bulls, rams, and deer all have this. Horn. Good job, good job. Probably happy about that imaginary dragon, liking fantasy. Got three letters, excellent. The first one's crucial, got that G, and an A, and an H. What could it be? I don't know. But I do have two words for you that will help you. First one is Aesop. Second one is jump. And I'll give you 10 seconds to figure this out. Good luck. Get 
guess, 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 anything? Ah. School champion, the answer is grasshopper. Grasshopper. Well, good job. Come on out, everybody. Congratulate this lady. Come on over. Our flowers surrounded by flowers. Very autumny today. So you had a good time? Yes. Still I did. feel okay? Yes. Mom and Dad, she did an awesome job. Very bright. You guys have a good time? Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, please join us again. We're gonna have a great time next week. Right now, we gotta say see you later. Let's do it. Bye bye. Prizes await our participants. First place, a family trip to the Philippines for three. Second place, Nintendo Wii. MP3 players for second to fifth place winners. And ChildU Online Education online membership for everyone on the show. The trip to the Philippines is made possible courtesy of the Philippine Tourism Authority. A chance to learn what it takes to be a super kid at home. The Super Kids Study Guide is out. Get yours today.